tweeting it out real quick. All right. I think we are live here, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in. Good afternoon. Happy Saturday afternoon. It's uh, We're leading off the nightcap here with Duke and Virginia Tech right before the uh, Wilder Fury fight, right? Which, Frank, I think you're, uh, you're looking forward to later tonight. Yes, 100%. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a fantastic fight, but we got Duke first. We have we have a fight here first that we have to get to between Duke and Virginia Tech. Duke coming off a, I don't even know what to call it, an accident. No, let's just not talk about it. <laughs> let's just not even talk about it. Adam in chat, welcome back. Great to see Duke Nation back in chat. Awesome. Great to have you back. Yes, no turnovers and hitting the free throws. We want to, and we want to get back to good, fundamental, solid defense. See here over my right shoulder, I have my turkey skewer ready to go for tonight. This is the proverbial <laughs> turkey skewer that is uh, ready to rock and roll here. So uh, this thing is going to tip here in a few minutes. It's on ESPN2. The game there, LSU, South Carolina, hasn't quite finished. While it does that, we're going to go ahead and roll the intro for you guys. Because actually, we forgot to do that last time. So that might have jinxed the whole thing. So let's just... Now we're live. Okay, we have to like flips audio crazy stuff going on there. Um, and let's just make sure that we're good to go here. All right, I think we're ready to roll. So hopefully, if that doesn't video doesn't get you hyped up, I don't know what will. But anyway, that's what we're here to do too. So I, we've even updated it with the Cassius Stanley, the Zion Williamson, the UNC from earlier this year that we've got to uh, remember, which was a lot of fun. I think this game is going to tip here soon. They're probably going to move us to ESPN News, and we'll get started here in a sec. So Duke now trying to take. Uh, Duke and Virginia Tech have already met, actually, and probably people are going to forget about that because it happened way back in December, December 6th, actually. Now, whoever decided to start playing ACC games in December, I have <laughs> I have no idea. But in Great any question. case, just put Ryan Robinson in to make things up. Oh, oh yes. And if we actually get... Uh, if we if we get a good enough game, maybe we will we will see some more Robinson and Severino. The Duke needs like a they need to come out firing tonight. So, friend, what are you looking to see here from the Blue Devils right off the get go? Uh, I'm really expecting to see a bunch of energy. I completely think it's going to be a turnaround from the NC State game. We started that game off really slow. We kind of got we lost the game off the beginning because of effort and hustle. And I really expect the Blue Devils to come out here and see the offense is flowing. Uh, the lineups have actually come out, so I'd actually want to quickly discuss that with you and what, what your thoughts are on it. Yep. Starting lineup is uh, Trey Jones, Goldwire, Cassius Stanley, Wendell Moore, and Vernon Carey. It's kind of a smaller lineup. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, so let's uh, let's actually go to that. There's a series of – let's see. So 
It was Wendell Jones, Stanley. Who was the fourth one? Wendell Jones, Stanley, Vernon, and Goldwire. Vernon, Carey, and Goldwire. It's an interesting lineup. They have on their on the Duke um, on the Duke stats. They have all the lineups and their and the records of the lineups. But this one, uh, I don't actually see. I don't actually see this one. Oh, wait, there it is. Jones, Goldwire, Stanley, Moore, Carey. Yes, it's 1-0. All right, so we basically, that to me basically says, like, we haven't, uh, like, we haven't played this lineup in the past. We've played this lineup once. Um, interesting uh, that Wendell Moore would be out on the court. Um, look at, I guess to your point, going to probably a little smaller, looking to move the ball. Um, I, the game hasn't started, actually, as far as yeah, I know. Yeah, it still hasn't started. Hasn't started yet. So we will have we got our scoreboard ready to go. It's got the proper colors this time. This South Carolina LSU game decided to get close late. Um, some things we are looking forward to talking to at halftime, though. I want to get to the Baylor-Kansas game from earlier today, which was one heck of a game. Three versus one in in uh, in, in Waco, Texas. And then uh, the other game, so... Um, Kentucky just went ahead and beat Florida. So that was another yeah. big one in the SEC. I feel like there's been like these big rivalry games and we're just kind of like left out. <laughs> we're yeah, like, oh, it's weekend, just Duke and Virginia Tech. Yeah, we're going to put them on ESPN the too. Ones. Yeah, this weekend we're, we've gotten ESPN every single time. I feel like we've had primetime games. So yeah, and now they just we can't, uh, can't always get it, you know. They just threw us on ESPN too and we're like, here, you have like the, the back, the B team commentators too while you're at it. On the broadcast. Um, remember the you first the game. team right here. Yeah. AT right here. First game uh, earlier this season, Duke went ahead and won that one. 77-63 was the final score. That was in Blacksburg back in December. And actually, so to your point, you're asking about the lineup. If we think back, and this is like three, almost three months ago, so it's, it's a big ask to like think back that far. But if we think back to the second half of that game, Duke struggled in that game early. We were actually down double digits at one point in the game. And then we trailed going into halftime. And basically, Vernon Carey sat on the bench for the entire second half, or the majority of the second half. He only finished that game with 12 points and five rebounds, which by all accounts is not like a very Vernon Carey type game, right? We expect him to go for 18, almost 20 points a night and, you know, do his double double thing. But essentially, they went, they just Duke decided to go with a smaller lineup. And then. And it actually worked. It actually worked. So the strategy changed there while we were uh, in Blacksburg and kind of sped it up. Um, yeah, I c completely agree. I'm just wondering, did you watch any of the Kansas Baylor game? I did, actually. I did. I watched the uh, I watched the second half of that game, and I was sort of really paying attention in the last 10 minutes there. So what is your opinion on probably the best big in college basketball? As a Buki? I yeah. mean, he had himself a game. 23 right. points, 19 rebounds. Like, how often do you see, like, the amount of rebounds almost equal the number of points? Although I will say, there was this, there's the guy from Dayton, that number one on... Yes. Oh, my, oh my goodness. Like, his dunks today... And granted, Dayton still only won by about 10 points. But uh, they're going to be a tough out. I mean, he's high-flying everywhere. Yeah, Azubuki, tough in the paint. The offensive boards, I mean, he was tough everywhere. Yeah, he was he tough was, everywhere. Uh, he played out of his mind today. I'm just really curious. Like, I, I think it would be really cool to see, like, a carry Azubuki matchup. Well, but so. But different but, play styles, both of them. Right, but Duke and Kansas already played. Yes, but, like, I want to see it later. Like, there's a difference, right? Carry's still coming in as, like, a you know, freshman, like once you experience college basketball, you play it differently. Right. And I think I, I want to see that matchup again. Hmm. Let's see. So apparently this game is quote unquote streaming live on the ESPN app, whatever the heck that means. Cause... Oh, Guillermo from Buenos Aires. Nice to have you back in chat. Yo, We're what's up? All right. And Duke apparently just hit a three. So we are like underway and ESPN is just not even. Yeah. You got to go to ESPN news. Uh, go to watch, go to just type in watch ESPN. I am there. I am there. Uh, da, 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 home. See, this thing is killing me. 
There it is. Let's try it here. Found it. Unless, apparently, this is the Fury uh, undercard here on ESPN News. So it's not working for me. Uh, that's, yeah, they probably have it overlapped. It's not going to pop up for us until the game, uh, until we actually finish. But hey, we can uh, update the scoreboard <laughs> um, as we're going. Um, we're up six to two right now with uh, only a minute and 24 seconds played in the first half so far. Uh, apologies, there is a game running over, so we can't actually view it and call the game for you currently right this now. Freddie is... Carey has just made another jumper to extend the lead to six. All right, this is really unfortunate. Live now on the ESPN app. That doesn't help me at all, ESPN. Oh, my gosh. And... Oh, now they're on ESPN3. Wow, okay. It's a huge fail. Huge fail yeah. by ESPN, as apparently as we're now up 8-2. to two, So we're going to have to fix the entire scoreboard here. And as you said, that was Wendell. We'll get the stats. Talk about throwing us for a loop. All right. And welcome, Adam, from Albuquerque, New Mexico. The Christian Leitner of Duke fans. Wow. Love Good it. Clutch. Love it. All right, let's go ahead and get these things updated for everybody. Looks like it's a quick six points here for Trey Jones and two of them for Vernon Carey, uh, which would give the Blue Devils eight. And then Virginia Tech trying to go down low, but can, or rather our entry pass trying to go in down low, but can't seem to get it. So. And by the way, we are four subs away from 200 subscribers on YouTube. We are going to be doing a giveaway for the 200th sub. So if you have not subbed, um, please do, and uh, the 200th person will get a giveaway. Well, well, so, well, that, so basically, we'll start the giveaway at 200. Correct. Right, yeah. and then whoever is a sub is eligible for the giveaway. Is how it works, and it's going to be right. a Duke dry fit shirt. So it'll have lots of it'll be some fun Duke swag. Keep it correctly themed. And there, Matthew <laughs> Zacher, thank you, thank you, Math Matthew for the sub. And then I can go ahead and act. All right, so we now we're finally we are finally we're finally there, friend. We're finally there. Oh, we're here. We're in Cameron. There we're we go. We're finally Trey in Cameron. Bring the ball off the court. Here we go, guys. Now we're live. We are. We are. Okay, we're doing this. We're doing this for real. So Trey Jones, horn set at the top of the key with Wendell and Vernon. Then Cassius Stanley on the right wing here. Jordan Goldwire back to Cassius Stanley. Stanley's going to try to shoot his three. Yes! Nice. Cassius Stanley with three. That is a big, that is big for Cassius Stanley. He has struggled ever since the Clemson game. Ever since the Clemson game, Cassius Stanley and Trey Jones are basically shooting around uh, 25% from three. The three-point shot has just sort of abandoned our guards, which has been really quite unfortunate here. And now on the other side, there's Elaney. Elaney's going to hit from three, so give three points to Virginia Tech. Stanley down. Oh, cross-court pass to Goldwire. Goldwire trying Ooh. to hit, but rebound to Vernon Carey. This is going to be a really easy dunk yeah. by Vernon Carey. Too easy down low. He literally, Carey. he And that was really good by Carey by not making it over the back foul. He actually was just able to jump up, kept his arm straight up, and grabbed it right over the top. That was a great job by Carey. Duke here out to a quick start. And the shot there by Virginia Tech. Nice elbow jumper there by, uh, by the Virginia Tech player. Wasn't sure exactly who that one was. Have they changed the Coach K court? No way. That's always it's... been there. Stanley again from the corner for three. Yes! Us! Stanley! Wow. We're shooting threes. We're shooting threes and we're hitting threes tonight. This is exactly what we wanted to see of Duke coming out here. Coming out on fire, of course, back at home. They will go to Wake Forest on Tuesday. A game we'll have live for you here as well. And Trey Jones there with the block. Re back to Virginia Tech, and Virginia Tech's going to try. Virginia Tech's Radford going to try to put that one up, but not successful. It's actually I can't. I think that's just out of bounds here. Here is the yeah, Vernon Carey so. put back, nicely done. Great move. All right, let's make sure we have everything updated here because it is 16 to seven Duke in the early going. And that's Elaney has five points there for Virginia Tech. All right. 
So we would talk about that first four minute segment, but ESPN didn't show it to us. So <laughs> yeah, and welcome back, Cam- uh, Camden, and thank you for the sub uh, after that last game. Uh, it was a joy talking to you also in chat, keeping chat lively. It's always exciting with all y'all in here. Oh, yes, exactly. Thank you so much for coming back. And we do remember you, by the way. We do remember all the names. We see the familiar faces, names, faces. Mm. All right, so a good start for Duke here. Getting Trey Jones and Cassius Stanley and then Vernon Carey, getting them involved early. Trey with six, Cassius Stanley with six, and Vernon Carey with four. Something we have not seen and didn't see at all on Tuesday night at NC State was Cassius Stanley. Actually, the scoring was all Trey Jones and all Vernon Carey. We've said for the longest time we need a consistent third scorer, and actually we had it for a while there with Stanley was being that third scorer, but he hasn't quite... I don't know. I thought it was maybe like a freshman wall kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's the, that kind of time of the year. I, yes, it happens. Uh, but also it's a long season, right? People are going to go up and down in swings of shooting threes. It's really hard to be, especially for a freshman coming in. It's really hard to be consistent throughout the entire year. So it, also with shooting threes, going to courts you've never played at, things like that. That's why you see like percentages always increase when they're playing at home because they're more used to the conditions. It actually makes a huge difference when you're playing away from home. It's a different backdrop behind the basket, different glass, different way how the basket's actually held up, and it does throw off your depth of perception. Not making excuses, you still – teams also go there, do shoot-arounds, get practice, get familiar with it, but you'll always see an increase shooting in threes when you're playing at home because of that. I wish Duke would storm the court if we beat NC State on March 2nd. Unfortunately, <laughs> they're, they're not actually like that uh, – they're not storm the court worthy – we, we don't waste our energy. Yeah, but on, just on to those. give it back to him, you know? Just No, no. No win in Cameron is ever an upset. It doesn't happen that way. And oddly enough, I actually I was texting like uh, some of uh, fellow Blue Devils today. I was like, Florida State was gonna, is going to go, was going to go play at Raleigh at NC State. And I was like, watch, Raleigh, uh, NC State's going to lose by 22 because <laughs> this, this is basically what they would do. They'll like go ahead and win. They'll beat Duke. Yeah. They'll beat Duke. By some miracle, and then the next game they'll just roll over. And I, the game was only a six-point game, so granted, like they didn't really roll over, but they they like wasn't close. Like Florida State just like took them out of their took them out of their own gym, basically. Yeah, it probably partied too much after the win. Yeah, they probably did, which is yeah. so it's like it's typical, like so typical, so typical. Ga- team just shows up for a game against Duke and. And then the next game, it's like, just no. <laughs> That's what happens when you're the best. And it happens, like, all the time. Eleni hits the first of the two free throws here. It's actually quite uh, – you see that. Except for SF Austin, actually. They've continued to win. They're – they're a team that's well in the tournament field at this point, winning their Southland Conference. They only have one loss in conference. Have a 20 – I think they have, like, a 23-3 and record. It's quite – Quite phenomenal what they've been able to do. So Trey Jones now training. Matthew Hurt now on the floor. It's Hurt, Goldwire, Jones, Stanley, and Javin Delorier. As Javin sets the high screen and Goldwire decides to refuse that one. Back to Hurt with seven seconds on the shot clock. Hurt, little wow. fancy behind the back play. Hurt gets in down low and scores! Ah, uh, that was so Larry Bird-esque. It's Ooh. unbelievable. That was beautiful for Matthew. That's what we need to see out of him. Speaking about birds, you got a lot of them coming into Cameron on the other side with the the Hokies there. This is Beatty. Beatty oh. driving on Hurt. Good defense. Oh, sorry. That was Nolly, rather. Up ahead to Cassius Stanley now. Jordan Goldwire looking to get the ball downloaded to Laurier. Can't quite make it work. Out to Stanley. Stanley now. And Stanley going to get... Dude, Goldwire, Goldwire now in the paint. Goldwire, a little bump there. Called foul. Yes, nice. and one. There you go, Goldwire. That's Beautiful. A great, great play. Beautiful by Goldwire. Let's get that replay out here for chat. I love this. Love to see that from him. Here we go. Here's the replay. Jordan Goldwire driving in. Look at that one. Look at that stroke. Pure. Pure bank. Way to go finish through contact. So Camden here with the study. Let's see. I studied Duke after that NC State loss and learned that we half get slow starts at tough environments, left to pay catch up. But when we play in Cameron, we're great. So 
Uh, does Golbar a- unable to connect there? This is actually an interesting thought that Justin has brought up before when we do our recap shows that basically, like, you get this slow start, and then even if you play even the rest of the way, you can't actually, like, come back. Correct. 100%. Because you're already it, down yeah. by so much. Right. Wilkins gets fouled by Matthew Hurt, and that is going to be the first foul on Hurt here. Yeah, so so basically that's why the that's why the hot start is so important. Or that's why getting off to a good start is so important. And I feel like we did that so much last year, like, oh my yeah. goodness. It's like it would we blow were teams all... out of the building within like five, ten minutes. Well, but like when we were at home, but when we went on the road, like the comeback at Louisville, right? The comeback at Florida State. True. The comeback against um Hold on. In the NCAA tournament, we did it twice, and then finally it wasn't enough, right? Against UCF, Virginia Tech, we handled in the NCAA tournament fine. And, 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 and you know, Camden, your point, though, makes me worried for kind of the NCAA and ACC tournament because we won't be at home, right? And you are susceptible to that kind of slow start when we're not playing at home. Yeah, in that case, it's do or die. As Alex O'Connell tries to drive baseline, whip around pass to Stanley. Stanley, ooh, just hangs in the air, levitating, but can't quite that shot to go down. He has been capable of hitting that in the past. Rebound down to Virginia Tech, who now finds themselves in a nine-point deficit here. Screened by Virginia Tech, refused by uh, Wilkins, and now back out to Beatty. Beatty trying to drive on Trey Jones, going to drive on Carey. Oh, Matthew Hurt with the active hands and the interception. Hurt now going the other way. O'Connell wants it outside, but Hurt is just going to take it coast to coast. Beautiful, beautiful coast to coast run by Matthew Hurt there. Nobody ended up stopping ball from Virginia Tech, and he takes the advantage and goes straight to the basket for an and one. Now, explain what do you mean by nobody stopped ball? We got the replay up so they can see. So one of the things here is like when you're playing Virginia, or if you're on the opposing team, someone's got a ball and they get offered a turnover or rebound, you got to get someone on him to stop the ball and stop the breakaway. If they're not, if if you don't do that, you're going to give them an open lane or you're going to be able to have them get an open shot. If you stop the ball, slow the game down, you can allow your defenders to get back into position. You don't foul. Or even there, you want to take a foul to get your defense back, get set, and make them run a half-court offense. Matthew Hurt completes the three-point play. It's five early points for Hurt here in the first half. 13-27 here to go. As Duke is off to a hot start here at home. Trey Jones working against... Oh, no, that's offensive foul. Yeah. Yeah. Couture with the offensive foul. (laughs) ACC team refs are... (laughs) Yes, pretty much. Who actually? I take that back. I wouldn't agree with that call. You don't agree with that as an offensive foul, no, really? I don't. He doesn't extend the arm. Oh, well, you know what? They gave it to us, so we're going to take it. Three turnovers now for Virginia Tech. Trey Jones down low. Oh, that was a foul. That was a foul. Yeah, 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 Trey Jones fouled call. by two Virginia Tech players on the reach in there. Virginia Tech, a team that is currently sitting on the outside of the bubble at six and nine here in the conference. Just trying to really, I guess, just trying to play spoiler really here tonight in Cameron. Remember, Duke already has beaten them once earlier this season. That was in Blacksburg, a place where, granted, as chat mentioned earlier, we do usually struggle. So good to see us get out there get out of there with a win now trey jones is going to shoot the second free throw and does connect so trey jones with eight points duke with a rather balanced scoring attack here four for yeah. carry six for stanley five for matthew hurt and eight for trey jones both hurt and stanley having quite a night to forget on tuesday didn't really make much of an impact in the game at all. Coming out and asserting themselves and rebound. Going to go down to Matthew Hurt. Nicely done by Hurt here. Very disruptive on the defensive end. Alley-oop! Oh, over to oh, oh, yeah. oh, no! Carey just misses the alley-oop from Trey Jones. And with Trey Jones with the active hands. Virginia Trek trying to get an alley-oop of its own. Goes down to Beatty here. After a bit of a mess. And then Wilkins for three. Wilkins connects from the outside. Virginia Tech... Here got the turkeys have put a three on the board. Now 
Alex O'Connell now working on BD. Gets it into Vernon Carey down low. It's exactly where he needs to go. That's a tough shot, though. He should kick that out. Yeah, he had a guy open up top, didn't he? Yeah, he I, should be kicking that I out. I think that was Trey Jones that was open up top, and Vernon Carey missed him. Man, well, he's going to kick himself when he looks at the tape tomorrow morning. Screen here. Beatty, the three is short off the front of the iron. Rebound down to O'Connell as coach calls out a play here, calling out five. Screen by Hurt. Wendell at the top. Uh, no, Carey at the top. Carey oh! for three. Wow. Carey for three, and it's a timeout, Virginia Tech, as Duke has doubled up the Hokies here with 11.35 on the clock. Love it. We are hitting shots today, boys and girls. It's a turkey shoot so far in Cameron. Duke needs a three score to make double digits. Who's it going to be at this point? It might be Vernon Carey. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but this is what we were talking, right, Adam? Like, this is the problem when we were at NC State. There, it's hard to find that third scorer on this team. And sometimes they all step up or it's one person that does it. But, like, this is the issue. We need to find that consistent third scorer. And I think that's the message being relayed. I don't actually mind that it's not – so consistent is an interesting word to use because I don't really care if it's Stanley or Hurt or O'Connell or Baker on any given night. I just care that it's someone. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like but somebody got to step up. I mean like a consistent third score as someone consistently steps up. Like can be yeah. anybody. Right? Well, we like, thought it was going to be Stanley. Yes, that's exactly what we thought. We thought it was going to be Casher Stanley, and you'd have like the big three of Carey, Stanley, and Jones, but it's has not been the case. Just getting the foul situation correct here, so that everybody is up to date on the scoreboard. It is four uh, four fouls for the Hokies to two for Duke as we are sort of pouring it on here from the three point line. Let me get you those stats. Duke shooting well from the floor, 10 of 14 field goal is 70, a nice 71% clip. That is a pretty good grade so far there. Five of six from three point land, 83%. Yes. You know, we can't quite grade uh, shooting percentages like we would school because uh, C isn't uh, very good, but <laughs> We're yeah, shooting but 83%. let's be honest here. We're shooting, uh, I think we've made more threes than we did in the entire first half last game of like free throws. Uh, I was going to say, then the entire game of free throws, maybe? No, I just said like the first half of free throws, maybe oh two. God. I don't know. It was bad. It was very bad. We've actually hit three of four free throws so far. Yeah. So we're back. So I think. Do it a little better. Do it a little better. Coach Case really had to like lay into them this this week. So let's see. You get back on Tuesday. You show <laughs> practice is going to be hard. It's going to be rough on Wednesday. Like, you know, that's going to that's gonna be miserable. And then you got to think about it. It's not that far of a drive. It's Thursday, Friday, and now back to it here. At one point in the season, I think after the SF Austin game, they actually did a double practice. Really? Yes. Do they? Wow. Yeah. They really don't do those uh, during the season, only in the off season. Right. Interesting uh, point of order here. Florida State did win earlier at NC State uh, by about six points. So they are 13-3 and three on the season in the ACC. Duke with 12-3 and three here st with the game here to play. And this is Bryce Jarvis that they're showing off. Bryce Jarvis, we have this these highlights for you. We're going to play this one at halftime. This one is the first perfect game in Duke history. That's pitched insane. by Bryce Jarvis last night as Duke went on to beat Cornell 8-0. to zero. This kid was sensational. We did a – we have a highlight video on the channel uh, about Bryce. We'll play it at halftime because it's, it's just really fun to watch. Uh, and it's like – it's just great. It's like those things that – like the rare things in sports that like never happen, like perfect games, right? Yeah, that is super rare. Even in the MLB, you don't see one of those every season or anything yeah. like that. That's incredible. Great to see. Great to see. And this is going to be a turnover here by the Turkeys. And going the other way is Wendell. Wendell's trying to put it up, but he will be fouled. Yeah. That was a really good outlet pass by uh, Carey. That was a good uh, transition offense. Everybody running down the wings, almost like a three-man weave. It was really great. 
good outlet pass. Let's look at the outlet pass here. Here's the turnover by Virginia Tech. Actually, it's a block. It's a block by Matthew Hurt. And this, the pass there that you said by Carey as Wendell steps up the line and drops the first of the two free throws here. Let's do a quick chat catch up. Uh, oh, okay. So we have 2021 recruits. Uh, uh, Buckmeyer is a good third scoring option. <laughs> Oh, boy. That would be nice if, uh, yes, that would be nice. <laughs> At some point, Severino's going to be a uh, be a scoring option there. Twice, Radford now at the top of the key. Goes to Elaney. Screen by Wilkins. No, nope. ball in the hands of Wilkins now and Elaney. Wilkins driving in the paint on Matthew Hurt. Good, oh, decent defense there by Hurt yeah. as Wilkins just goes over the top. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Wilkins now has seven here in the early going, try, trying to get down to Carey again. That should have been a foul as Carey finishes, <laughs> although Carey kind of initiated the contact. They literally have like a triple team on the – Well, but see, they're, they, okay, they're double look, teaming him on the block. Yeah, so – but this is, this is why if you look back at the tape from the – Virginia Tech game, the first Virginia Tech game, the strategy they're using is the same. That's actually why we went to the smaller lineup in the second half, and Vernon Carey didn't play the second half, because they were bringing the double team on every single possession. Extra pass by Hurt to Wendell Moore. I think Hurt should have basically shot it at that point. Trey Jones, I agree. now with 16 seconds on the shot clock, going to drive in and amongst the turkeys. Outside by Wendell, long rebound goes into Hurt. Hurt's just going to have to take this one himself, and he gets stripped on the way down. Kind of lost his footing there. Wilkins with the strip and going the other way here is Cone. Jalen uh, Cole, sorry. Jalen Cole, we'll have to fix that on the scoreboard, who had one heck of a night the other night against Miami. We'll get to that in a second. And oh. a whistle against Jordan Goldwire here. And that'll be a foul for him. So as I was mentioning, the first game in Vir in Blacksburg, the strategy was to double team Vernon Carey basically the entire time. And it was extremely effective. That's why Duke found itself down double digits in that game. <laughs> yes, Matthew, Duke looking good here in the early going, doubling up Virginia Tech. And says, doesn't Coach K ever stand up? <laughs> Coach K, uh, no, doesn't really ever stand up. That uh, doesn't really happen there. The shot is missed by Radford, and the rebound goes down to Wendell. And I see, nice I inlet see. pass there to carry his double teamed again. Kicks out to O'Connell. O'Connell for three. In and out. Just missed his O'Connell there. Barely misses that one. This is Elaney. Elaney for two. Ooh. Three Blue Devils there for the rebound off the missed shot. Rebound comes down to Carey. And it's Goldwire bringing it up the floor as we tick the seconds down towards the eight-minute media timeout. 8.50 on the clock to go. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Stanley, Goldwire, Trey. No, no Trey, actually. Uh, AOC, right. Wendell, and Carey. Carey now posting up again, and Carey kind of loses his shot there. Seven seconds. AOC coming around on the curl. Long range two off the back of the iron. Wendell tries to tap it out. Can't do so. Out ahead to Nolly. And then Nolly goes in and oh, that no. one is disrupted. But goaltending? No. Wait, what happened? Oh, Coach K did stand up. Oh, <laughs> Coach K's up. Coach K's up. I don't really understand what happened there. I don't either. Oh, well. All right, we got to fix the scoreboard there. That uh, I'll have to find a way to do that later. It's uh, incorrect on the penalty. But uh, back to Duke. As Goldwire now goes to O'Connell. Oh, my goodness! O'Connell goes straight baseline and just puts the turkeys on a poster. What? Wow. Reincarnation of Grayson Allen right there in O'Connell. Wow. O'Connell just took it himself. That was awesome. Virginia Tech, one of eight in the last eight field goals, and it's blocked by Matthew. It's the second block of the game. It is. Going the other way is hurt. Oh, he thought about it. He wanted it. O'Connell now. O'Connell's feeling it after that dunk. 
Screen up top. No, they're just going to set the offense here. They're going to send four people down to the baseline. Stanley will reverse play. Stanley on the nice. outside! Nice, Stanley. We're hitting threes and hypnosis. I think we're going to hit more than 50 points. Yo, Virginia Tech that. needs a timeout in a bad way. And here's Beatty trying to – that's a that's way too tough of a shot. Rebound down to Stanley. Stanley going the other way with it. No, it's just going to slow things up here. Goal wire. Next whistle will take us to the under eight timeout. Oh, We're boy, the turkeys. We're turning up They're the temperature here. It. They are begging for that timeout. O'Connell off the curl. No, goes to Deloria. Deloria looks like he has his way with his man in the paint. Blocked. Gets his own block back. Outside, it's out on Virginia Tech. Yes, Ooh. it is out on Virginia it's Tech. Out. We have hit the under-8 timeout. And that is going to be the under-8 media timeout. Woo! Here we go. We're on our way to 50-plus before the end of the Let's half. Let's see this dunk again by O'Connell. Woo! The two-hand jam over him, too. Damn it, I missed uh, it. Put him on a poster. <laughs> Sorry, Chad, I missed the replay. It was too quick. It wasn't Ooh. the greatest angle, I'll be honest. No, it was not the greatest angle. I, if they do it again on, on the uh, coming out of the timeout, we'll do that one. Mm. Just put I mean, the this gravy has into be the one pan. Of the nicest score box or box scores I've ever seen. Which one? Uh, like this box score. Oh two yeah, this points, box nine score. Nine points, nine points, eight points, zero zero two two five. You love to see it. Uh, how about those Jayhawks? Yeah, Jack Ritter, they were really good. I remember you were a fan of them. They played really well today. Got a little lucky on the last uh, on the last play, but uh, it was uh, no, really no, great no, no, no. Hold on. Let's talk about that, though. I thought this was really smart. I thought this was really smart because, oddly enough, as soon as as soon as soon that situation, when they were talking on the broadcast, do you foul, do you let him shoot the three? I was like, wait a second, guys. This is the exact same situation Duke, yep. as the end of the Duke Carolina game. And lo and behold, Jay Billis, right after me, says this has happened at the Duke Carolina game. I was like, thanks, Jay. Beat you to that one. But in any case, I was like, wait a second. No, Bill Self knows. Bill Self knows he's going to he's going to trust his defense, and it was the right call. I would, especially when you're playing like the team that's down, like at home, it's even more risky to have crazy things happen to you. Like I would have, I I would have just played it out exactly like the way they did. I think it was the right call, and I suppose like Bill Self's call is vindicated by the fact they won the game, right? Correct. Yeah. But like I would not have I don't like I don't like the foul thing at the end of the half at all, actually. I, I think it's pretty terrible. It's a terrible I also think that matchup with Baylor is like a it, it's a mismatch, I think, with Kansas. In the sense of like they can't stop anything from Azabuki. Like like it's actually just like the teams don't line up well against each other, pretty much, to be completely honest. What, uh, how, oh, so you're saying Baylor just like, doesn't have a – Yeah, they just have don't have anybody that could actually guard as a book. It's just kind of like awkward. I was watching the game, and they're just like kind of like, well, he can kind of do whatever he wants. We kind of have to hope we can outscore him. It, it was very odd. I'm curious from uh, uh, Jack, you from a – remember you're a Kansas fan. I'm curious on your perspective on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we don't want to talk about the NC State game. It's all right. We've, we, we've, we've turned the page. The um... – uh, yes, I do remember that. Beast mode. Wait, what? Well, which one was that? Why don't I remember that one? I'm trying to, like, think back the Grayson Allen one. Oh, a lot of memorable out. ones. It was... It's the one where he, like, hits the floor. Where he, like, oh. falls on his face, kind of. Oh, okay. I only so I only remember well the Grayson Allen. I remember a lot of the Grayson Allen ones because I was there for so, most of it. But the uh, the the winning one against Virginia Tech is like the against Virginia against Virginia ranked Virginia at home. The travel uh, and here's Matthew Hurt trying to gonna put that one up at the end of the shot clock. It is missed. However, Joey Baker now in the game, so it is Stanley Baker, Trey Jones, Delorier, and Hurt. As Virginia Tech manages to get two points there off of the inbounds play. I didn't quite get to see who that was. Wow, they're still talking about this game. Oh, they're still talking about the Carolina game? We'll be talking yeah. about the Carolina game for a long time here. Joey Baker True. takes a step inside off the back iron. Rebound down to Matthew nice. Hurt, and he gets oh. pushed. He had an he had an absolutely great lane to the basket to throw it down there. Yeah, yeah that was going to be a slam by yeah, Baker. Smash that in.
And Joey Baker's going to head to the free throw line here. Fouled on the way in. Uh, uh, that was hurt. Radford. Hurt. Hurt. Oh, hurt. Sorry. Oh, well, we get the rebound. We get the put back in. There's the two points. So instead of shooting free throws, we just shoot a layup instead. We've gotten really good at this rebounding off of missed free throws. Cassius Stanley puts himself into double figures here. He has 11 to start uh, in the first half. Of course, remember that Grayson Allen dunks on Wisconsin. Well, you remember the entire Grayson Allen sequence. Sequence, Wisconsin. yeah, that like five minute episode of him just just total takeover the game. Yeah. Outside shot again from Cassius Stanley. Woo! Oh, it's Stanley Woo! can't miss tonight. Oh man, he Yo, is feeling it. Stanley is out here with something to prove. Stanley is on a mission. That's uh, an air ball. You're going to hear it from the crowd, too. Oh, oh it's too much on the outlet pass there. Trey That's Jones just down. throws it up ahead of Stanley, unfortunately. Name the three assistants on the bench uh, with Kay. John Shire, Nolan yeah. Smith, and I don't know the Nate third. James. Nate James. There Nate James. And that's the guy who taped my ankle when I went to Duke basketball camp. Nate James? Mm-mm. Oh, Jose. The, uh, yeah, the uh, shorter. Yeah, the say, trainer, Jose. Wider. Yeah, yeah, he's the man. He's a really yeah. nice guy. Great, Great tape oh. job. Trey Great Jones did job. come up with a steal there. Technically a change of possession, but he steps out of bounds. Can't quite control it. I still love the hustle, though. Uh, I think ESPN is just reminding us that the name of the court is Cameron. Yeah, it's, I don't know Corey. I don't know what Corey Alexander is saying. See, the funny thing is, the two of those three coaches played while I was in school. So, like Shire and Nolan were on the teams that I saw th all throughout my entire undergraduate uh, and career. in class. Uh, they in class? not quite. They were two years older than me, or one year older, I think. One year above yeah. me. They graduated they, one year above. I doubt they'd be in the engineering classes, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> That's a foul of Virginia Brian Tech. I think it was Brian Zubek was the engineer. One of the players was an engineer. Uh, that I don't remember. I think Zubek one did of the Plumleys. Some. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of the Plumleys. Did I take some engineering classes early. Yeah. Yeah, I forget which one it was. Uh, yeah, I actually did watch the entire game yesterday. Uh, the Pelicans game. I think it was against the uh, Trailblazers. Not against the Nuggets. It was yes, against the Trailblazers. Trailblazers. My best friend Carmelo over there. Um, he's been playing really well. And honestly, any criticism that comes his way about his game right now, I kind of ignore because he's had no offseason. He's had no time to actually develop his game yet. Like, he's playing very well where he is right now, and he's only going to get better. He actually suffers from the same uh, free throw shooting syndrome that Duke does. Who, Zion? Yeah, he'd be averaging 25 points a game if he shot 75. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he that's can't true. Free throws. Yeah. That shot is no good either by Virginia Tech. Puts it over the entire the entire backboard. Stanley uh -oh. going to go try uh -oh. again for three. Oh, that heat check goes way wide. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, that was a heat check and a half. Oh, right. boy. Well, you know what? I don't care. He could take it. <laughs> He's been yeah, playing. Totally fine. He's been playing so well tonight so far. They have literally have scored 18 points. Yeah. Stanley, five of six from the floor. That was actually his first miss. Go figure. He was four of four from the outside before that one. And so actually he has four. Yeah, he's got 14 points. Virginia Tech still can't hit the basket. And Goldwire goes Ooh. right in. Oh, that's a that's going to be offensive goaltending, uh. but they don't call it because the shot doesn't go in anyway. Here on the other is Radford. Radford down low oh. trying to pass it up. And it's a turnover. Virginia Tech. It's a good transition defense. Yes, and right a kid there, crushing eight. Virginia Tech so far. Having Turkey here in the first half. Stay back. Stay for the second for second half for seconds, however, of course. Yep. <laughs> There's yeah, the RJ. I completely agree with that. I've said it way too many times. Double team again for Virginia Tech. This time, Carey goes outside, but Trey Jones can't hit. So that was the right play there. Yep, that was, was the right play. That was the right play. Can't be upset about that. 
Radford. Radford gets it stripped by Carey. Goldwire picks up the ball. Now going the other way. Stanley! Stanley hits the bottom of the backboard what? and no foul called. Wait, what? Wait. It's all right. Virginia Tech somehow ends up with it. That was weird. Wilkins here on the outside is Cole, and Cole hits from the outside. I didn't think he had established himself in bounds. I didn't think so either, right? Right? I... That didn't make any sense. I don't know. That was just weird. Carey going to try for three again. Carey, that's off the back iron. Way too strong. But Goldwire of all people! Ooh! Who gets the the rebound down low? Look at the little guy gets rebounding position. Right place, right time, right hustle. And East. he gets in an easy land for two. East. I love it. I what love it. What a sneaky it. play. I love he switched spots with Carey. Yes, they did, actually. That was kind of funny. Goldwire's like, yo, Carey, you go, you go outside. That was awesome. Didn't Virginia Tech beat Louisville? I don't. Wait, who was the last one to beat Louisville? Uh, Clemson. Clemson beat Louisville. Clemson beat Louisville and Florida State beat Louisville. Those are the two Louisville losses. I'm pretty sure. Uh, is is how that works, uh, Razor. They played each other uh, on the 4th of February. The Cardinals did beat Virginia Tech. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, for, uh, Louisville's only two losses are Clemson at Clemson and then two Florida State uh, in Louisville. Actually, don't quote me on that. That's from last year. Uh, after the loss to NC State, will Duke still be in the AP in six in the ranking? No, we'll probably be like 11th if I had to guess. Yeah. Which is like just on the outside, which is, I don't know, it's probably. My guess is 11. Yeah, I, which is fine. I mean, all these rankings switch around so much. We don't really lose that much. But if we don't, if we lose like one more game until the tournament, we'll probably be in the top five. Other teams are going to lose here and there. So it's. It's nothing to really worry about. It. What I am worried about is getting the one seed. Is getting what? The one seed. Oh, he's getting the one seed. Well, that is the that I don't is think it's the possible problem, anymore. Right? Yeah, I don't think it's possible anymore. Right now, I don't think we'd we have are. To, we'd have to win the ACC. We'd have to tournament. win the ACC tournament. Well, actually, we need some help because we'd have to beat. We have to beat Louis. I think we'd have to beat Louisville and Florida State. Yeah, we well, we probably have to win out. Yeah, it would help to beat a ranked Carolina, but that isn't going to happen. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's Carolina just... lost again today. Unfor- to Louisville. Unfortunately, they only hurt us if we play them. Yes, Carolina can Plus only it, hurt us. It doesn't help us if we win. It's like, oh, Duke swept Carolina this year. Like, oh, San yeah. Diego State down but... fourteen at the beginning of the second half. Interesting. San Diego State, one of the teams that is on. One they of the nation's the longest record. win streaks. The first one was Baylor. I believe that win streak was 23 wins. Ended today at home by Kansas. San Diego State, I think, has 21, if I heard that correctly. Uh, um, and yeah. thank you. Wait, what is that? I don't know what for the top three is. No. But, yeah, we will be doing an NCAA March. Oh, Madness I know what it Alex. is. It cut it off. I have to make that shorter. I see. Oh, that's what happened. Oh, yeah. that's what happened. Oh, yeah. So that is the March Madness uh, ter- bracket challenge that I've created, which is our back bracketology special that we will be doing bracketology live on Selection Sunday. We'll basically just be watching the show and then filling out the brackets live. And everybody in the channel gets to participate and then we'll give away money for whoever wins. <laughs> so, like a decent amount of money. So yeah, it should be uh, unless like I win. In that case, I'll just pay myself. So y'all have to beat beat us, us basically. Beat yeah, us basically. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's the the seed lines at the moment uh, that oh, are showing. Oh, the they heard us. They, they heard, heard us. us. So there it but is. If if San Diego State loses, right? Dayton pops in, and then Baylor lost. Oh wait. Joe Lenardi still has him as a one seed, even if they lost. I mean, they lost to Kansas. They uh, lost they to another lost to one seed. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So, like, that loss isn't doesn't really doesn't doesn't really do anything for Baylor and and Kansas. Now, my guess is that they will play again. So, before it's all said and done, Kansas and Baylor will probably play again in the big to finish off the Big Twelve because 
And the winner there, unless the Big 12 still doesn't... No, they do have a conference tournament, right? Maybe. I don't know. So, yeah. Adam, if you think you can beat us, then, like, have at it. So... Yeah, you're just giving me more motivation to prove my college basketball knowledge. It's, it's good. Yeah. Our expertise is Duke. That's, like, we have time to, like, watch watch Duke. So, that works there. Obi Toppin. Wait, this is, is insane. Did you see that? How he shot that behind the backboard? No, it was like a Kobe shot. Yeah, it's not. It's RIP. Nolly picked up his dribble there, was in trouble for a second as he gets this back outside. And that is going to be. I, I don't know who scored for Virginia Tech, actually. I don't know either. In any case, we'll get that. <laughs> I can't tell if I should take that as a critique or I should take it offensively, but I'll take it as a compliment. Yeah, Radford. Okay, so that was Radford. That was Radford. There we go. As far I as uh, Trey guys. Jones inbounding oh. now and down low to carry and carry with the left hand is blocked, blocked by Virginia Tech's horn. Duke still here with a 21 point advantage here, 46, 25 with about a minute 28 to go and inbounding to Matthew hurt. Matthew is going to take this shot from the outside. Matthew. For three. Nicely done. Matthew's going to get it going, too. He's got eight tonight. Oh, I got to love that. That guy's outfit's awesome with the with the, with the the wig and the tiger shirt. Oh, from the student section? Yeah. Oh! He Outside here for Virginia Tech. That shot is off the back iron, too. Right down to carry. Trey Jones with a pass up ahead. Stanley! Yes! Oh, phew. I thought he almost missed that. I thought he and overthrew it. We did get over 50. We did. We have hit 51 points in a single half here for Duke. I, I actually, I thought Stanley was going to slam that one. Yeah, I did too. I wanted the massive dunk. No good for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech just can't get anything to go at the moment. And Duke having, causing all sorts of problems for Tech as and we were going to be holding it down to the last shot here. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to be the last shot here for Duke. 18 seconds. About a six-second game clock, shot clock differential. So chance for an offensive rebound if Duke does miss. Long cross-court pass to Matthew. Matthew traveled. Oh, God. Uh, aye, aye, aye. Matthew Get in there. Get in there, O'Connell. So nine seconds left to go here in the first. As long as Virginia Tech doesn't hit a shot at the buzzer like Florida did against Kentucky, although Kentucky ended up winning that game. But they uh, that, that, shot was nice. that Florida shot was pretty sick. See, the, the, the nice thing about having the night game is you get to watch all the ones before. And True. O'Connell actually fouls here. Oh, I know why. Duke with fouls to give here. They have only have three in the half. So may as well go ahead and foul and force Virginia Tech to re-inbound the ball. That's kind of the strategy going on here at the moment. Yeah, and that's also why he um, took out Trey Jones, because he doesn't want Jones to pick up more fouls. Yeah, Trey Jones with one foul. Actually, no Blue Devil in any sort of foul trouble as O'Connell gets a second foul. That was kind of a cheap one. I'm trying to poke that ball out there from Some behind. Purpose. I think they can stop fouling at this point, unless you're just going to put a walk on in there and like be like, yo, f go foul them. <laughs> um, I think he'll foul him again. With that three straight fouls on O'Connell? What is O'Connell? Just like a foul battery? Like, what? <laughs> hey, 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 Alex, I want you to go in there and just. Uh, just foul. Just foul him, all right? Yeah. That was great defense. That great, great. defense by Goldwire. The shot. Great end to the first half. Is right there. way right. off um, by Virginia Tech. The Kentucky game was was close, but yo, that kid Quixie just took over in the second half. That was impressive to watch how he took over. 
Mm. Okay, so we are at the halftime. Duke 51, Virginia Tech 25 here. It's been a really good uh, first half by Duke here. And really. so as and we're, we're saying, see the this highlights. is the yeah. San Diego State UNLV that folks in chat have been keeping tabs of. Wow, they're just kind of shooting the lights out. They it are seems. just kind of shooting yeah, the lights out. It just, just seems they're hitting threes, and that's about it. We'll see a breakaway dunk. Nice. Ah, UNLV is 14 14. Yeah, nine and six in conference there. San Diego State. Plenty of time left, though. It's only a seven point game. 15 40 to go in the second. I mean, look at that. 26 and zero. Undefeated still on the season. That's so insane. impressive. That's yeah. uh, Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard's alma mater as well. Qu yes, exactly. Kawhi Leonard. All right. I think that's it as far as their. I think that's it as far as their uh, stats or uh, their highlights are concerned. Yeah, I think it is. I think they're just talking about that, yep. which is why. All right, so we got. The perfect game. We're gonna go and do. We're gonna do the baseball highlights from yesterday because this kid was phenomenal. As long as we find it, we can find it here. Yeah, I completely agree with that. The Mountain West Conference is not, I mean, it's not the strongest conference in the world. And being able to just kind of beat up on those teams, if your team's that much better, it's way easier to well, go. Well, it's it. like the Gonzaga thing, right? Yeah, it's true. All right, so here we go. This is Bryce Jarvis from yesterday. These are the every single out from his perfect game. He struck out 15, by the way. Yesterday, I mean, this kid was throwing nasty, nasty stuff. That one's an out. That one's just an out to first. As as as, as we've learned, they don't have legit like real cameras here with the. Uh... Oh yeah, they don't. They don't have like real cameras here. It's like not get like this. There's like one camera for like the whole game. That is very weird. I mean, which is, is quite, un which is quite unfortunate, because it would have been cool to have the reverse angle. I laid enough. It was also like thirty degrees for this game, which is yeah. absurd. They're like they're playing baseball in February in, in February. Yeah, it's yeah. freezing. It's actually out there. still cold, despite the fact that it's like North Carolina. Apparently, there was snow on the turf like earlier in the day that they had to clear off. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, the camera gets lost on this play, which is kind of funny. There's just an out to first, and the camera decides to go out to left field. Oh, they, they, there's, God. like, no shot here by Cornell. And then, like, the camera decides to change for some reason. I don't know why. There's, like, no hit for, by Cornell in this entire game that's actually, like, that's actually risky. Like, that actually risks this entire, like, perfect game, which is... Quite phenomenal. See, it paints the outside corner on that one. Ooh. And I think he's going to strike this guy out. Oh, yeah. He gets that one Dude, looking. Should have gone for that gas. one. This is pretty impressive. Oh, strikes three out in a row. Yeah, he actually will get wait till he gets to the end. And then this one, is, he's going to take this one himself, by the way. He gets in like three or four outs on his own. That's my perfect game. Yes, it is. Although you, it's just a little nerve wracking, right? To be able to be throwing the uh, your own outs there. He gets that guy swinging. That, and there's six more to go. He's got nine outs. Uh, he's got eight outs to go. There's another one. Jesus, Cornell can't even see the ball at this point. They're just guessing. No, yeah, honestly, baseball's like a hard thing to do. <laughs> the catcher is like... In college? Playing college is way easier because with the metal bat, it's way easier to make contact and actually get a hit. So this is almost even more impressive. There, that one from third goes all the way. Nice. You're still clean here. That, that counts as a strikeout because he went, essentially. Yeah. And then that's a check swing. Easy where to second base out. So he's got three outs to go. 
right? This is the ninth inning. Strikes that dude out. Oh, no way. He strikes all three. Oh, out. yeah. He gets that dude wow, chasing. Gets this dude. Oh, the breaking oh. ball is just brutal. Oh, my goodness. And then he ends it with this thing. Oh, see ya. Like, That's awesome. incredible. He strikes out the last three batters to give himself a perfect game. How else would you finish this thing? It's that beautiful. so awesome. It is so well done. In any case, Bryce Jarvis, congratulations, Bryce Jarvis, and Duke basketball for the first – Duke baseball, rather. Woo! Getting my bees mixed up there. Oh, yeah, he says watch the uh, Georgia uh, – All right, let's it. go find it. Uh, let's find – Do you know who hit the shot? I do not. Uh, Razor? Was it Anthony Edwards? Let's see. Georgia buzzer beater. I do. I, I love seeing this conversation chat going back and forth between the Kentucky, the Kansas fans. This is great. This is what I love to see. It's fantastic. Oh, the one against Vanderbilt? Here. Is it today? Wait a sec. That's not that's not what we want. All right, here it is. Oh, I love I love how they changed this record on the screen right away. Like, I want to slow back, it like, down. Slow it down. Awesome. Is it saying the description? Uh, Tyree Crump hits Tyree the game Crump. winner. Okay. Got it. Wow. Yeah, that was their fourth win in SEC play. Yeah, they they were supposed to be really good, and I think Anthony Edwards was. He's still going to be the number one pick in the draft, I think, uh, by all uh, by all intents and purposes, but he just hasn't really played up to the potential he was expected to in college. Um, and welcome back, uh, Skylar. Welcome back, Skylar. Appreciate that you're here. So, but I remember in, in Maui that uh, Georgia, it was, it was Edwards. Georgia was down huge and Bill Walton yeah. was going off on some like stupid tirade. Yeah, I don't know what was... he says half the time anyway, but, and then they came back basically. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think his his supporting cast isn't fantastic around him either, and I think that's kind of a problem. I'm, but they yeah, have a new coach in Georgia, and Tom Crean. He used to coach at I Indiana, think Indiana, and yep. he's starting to bring better recruits to Georgia itself. So maybe the SEC is kind of on the upswing, or Georgia is too. And also, as a reminder, we are three subs away from uh, our giveaway at uh, 200 subs. Anybody that is a subscriber is eligible to get that. Um, Giveaway. Yeah, Camden. Camden. Camden with the statement. The and truth. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say why he's the worst commentator, but it's all right. Y'all know. I mean it is it is like next level. Yeah, uh, he, yeah. Giveaway is a thirty it's what? It's a Duke Athletic. It's a Duke dry fit shop. shirt yeah. that we'll get in whatever size you want. And ship it to you. Yeah, so we'll like DM one of the 200 subscribers, make it random. We'll pick one of you. We'll reach uh, reach out to y'all, and you'll uh, give us your info, and we'll send it your way. Yeah, we're just gonna send it to you. It's like a, it's just it's a Duke Dry Fit uh, shirt. So, yeah, yeah. I suppose if if a non Duke fan, um... yeah, I don't know what to do if a non Duke. I, don't know I guess what get to it. do. We it's talked cool. about like, well, I guess like. They could choose an equivalent one of their team, yeah. like. <gasps> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not every sub is. I suppose we'll let we'll let like we'll the ask. winner choose the equivalent yeah. shirt of their team, kind of yeah. thing. But, like, yeah. like we'll send you the link of the shirt and be like, find yeah. something equivalent if you don't want this. Find something equivalent. In any case, we appreciate everybody hanging out here and joining us for the games. Duke putting on a show here, fifty-one twenty-five back home in Cameron Indoor Stadium after the disaster in Raleigh uh, we have yeah. bounced back we have bounced back considerably well as I thought 
as I'm going we to thought use we would. The restroom very quickly. Yeah. Some interesting tidbits here. So Virginia Tech actually coming off. Hey, but Duke beat Kentucky national title. <laughs> But actually, that Leitner shot was not in the national title game, Adam. That Leitner shot was in the Final Four to then win the national title the game after. So. Oh, ac- oh, oh, that is the one. Okay, so this is the Anthony Edwards one. Look, this dunk is incredible. Fortunate. <laughs> San Diego State up ahead of UNLV here. Ten points. Yeah, actually, so what they were saying was that if San Diego State were to lose, they would actually drop off the one line, which is interesting. We'd probably put Dayton up there. Duke needing probably another ranked win, either against Louisville or Florida State, or both to solidify a top seed. To solidify a top seed in the tournament. So we I'm were back. just uh, we were just watching. They showed they showed that halftime buzzer. Uh, no, that game winning buzzer there. Oh really? Yeah. And uh, actually, the, there was the there rig. was the Anthony Edwards dunk as well. We were talking about Anthony. Yeah, Edwards. it was nuts. It yeah. was nuts that and, dunk. Who like the ball hits the dude in the head? It's like yeah. as if that wasn't bad enough that you just got dunked on. Like the ball hits you when it comes down. Like, it was uh, it was bonkers. Yeah. It was throwdown was awesome. I watched it earlier today. It was I was like whoa. <laughs> it's like that's why you got NBA potential, buddy. So a couple couple things, points of order from the association, uh, oh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, let's say, Clay Thompson out the rest of the season. Yep. Not coming back. As expected. Yeah. Duke, uh, former Duke star Kyrie Irving, also not coming back. Yeah, so uh, this one I'm kind of curious about because I, I think he can play. I just don't think he wants to play because what's the – or Kyrie? He wants to play, yeah. But the problem is that he doesn't have KD this year. He might as well wait, right, for the next year and get healthy. He's had that shoulder problem for such a long time, and he hasn't been able to figure it out. Right. So I, I, I think it's I think it's fair that he's not playing, to be honest with you. That's just me. That's my perspective on it. And then it says that Steph Curry will be back uh, March 3rd, next week. Yeah, which is odd, right, for him to come back. Yeah, uh, when, not... Clay, when Clay Thompson is not going to come back, but Curry is going to play. But apparently the plan was to have Curry come back the entire time. They were saying, well, March March 3rd was sort of the date. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so I, I like still think it's odd. to. I mean, I, I know he wants to play basketball, but like, eh, I feel like you might as well just keep tanking for the like, top, top pick. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, Rays are saying that Curry sh- uh, shouldn't probably shouldn't. I I he probably shouldn't either. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily agree with. I I don't necessarily agree with the uh, with the reason to actually uh, to keep playing. Yeah. All right, coming out of halftime here, Duke ready to roll. We got about twenty seconds to go before the halftime buzzer goes off. On the other side. <laughs> All right, Chad, keep it civil. Keep it civil, everybody. We can all get along. I don't want to have to bring out moderation here. <laughs> well, nothing's that bad. No, no. It should be... It should be able to... Respect what? all the teams. Everyone is, is has a right... Just don't badmouth the other ones. Like, <laughs> if you start really going off... Oh, boy. Then we'll have some words. Yeah. Coach K here talking with uh, with AOC. Wait, I'm actually curious. Adam, is he actually still have nerve damages in his arm or in his hand? Is that why? Uh, 
It's kind of interesting. But, yeah, we are back live. We are back Fritz live in Virginia Tech here to start with the ball. This is Beatty, who is put up a goose egg, or a turkey egg, I suppose, in the first half. No points for Beatty at all, who is one of Virginia Tech's top players, but is Radford there, and Radford is going to try to get one over Carey and Goldwire, but can't do it. That is in and out. The Cameron Rim decides to help out our Blue Devils there. Cassius Stanley, Goldwire, Carey, Wendell, and Trey Jones. That is a tough shot by Wendell, but he actually ends up getting fouled by Beatty, and Wendell gets fouled in the act of shooting. So Wendell going to go ahead and go to the line on this one. Quick stat check around for both teams. Duke still shooting well. 16 of 35, actually, as Wendell... No, Wendell misses that first one. 50% from the three-point line, 7 of 14. So we've... And about 45% from the field. So we have cooled off a bit. We, we have cooled off just a bit. from We were, like, shooting 70 earlier. I love I love this back and forth. I love the back and forth. It's, it is it's kind of absolutely funny. hilarious. Yeah, it's great. I mean, if you guys ever want to continue this conversation outside of YouTube or anything like that, we do have a Discord that you can openly talk about, like any sports, anything going on, like chat about it during the game or even when we're not casting too. So more than welcome. To or educate us on yeah. the. Oh, that is Nolly. Nolly hits from three on the outside. That is Nolly's first points. Of the contest here at the 1848 mark of the second half. Yeah, I mean, in, in that Discord, too, you can give us notes. You can ask us things to change in the show, any advice or anything like that. We're always more than here to listen. And that was Trey Jones going to the bucket for a really nice left-handed layup right there. Yeah, you see him just getting into the paint. Really, Virginia Tech hasn't had any answers on the defensive end or really on the offensive end for for whatever. We talked about like the hot starts being or the slow starts being a problem for Duke when they'd go on the road. Well, look, look the slow start for Virginia Tech sort of doomed them <laughs> from the get go. Yeah, that's a tough uh, <laughs> the showing the individual's dad and it's kind of a tough game, but. Well, actually, so, so the, I mean, the last game Virginia Tech played was a three overtime game against Miami, like three overtime game. That game went into the hundreds. Yeah. 102.95, which is crazy. I was looking through the stats of that game and then they're like, oh, so-and-so went into a career high. So-and-so scored a career high. I was like, <laughs> yeah, he had a game and a half to do it. Like you would, <laughs> you would think if you give the dude 55 minutes, like. And they keep scoring. Maybe they're going to get career highs. Like, that kind of happens. <laughs> oh, my God. And we're here we're going to have Duke inbound in the ball, taking it up the floor as well. All the uh, Virginia Tech coach and players look rattled. Oh, that was a foul. That's that got to be a foul. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He grabbed them by the arm. He had yeah. them pulled. He had them locked 100%. Elaney now, that's his third foul there. Two fouls on Virginia Tech in this half of the of play. I was trying to get to Vernon Carey. Once again, they brought the double team, but the double team just isn't enough to stop Vernon Carey. They thought about bringing the double team again, and if Carey with a good footwork, Oof. but can't quite finish with the left hand. And rebound I understand why he takes that shot, but like at a certain point, he needs to pass. Well, we brought that up earlier, right? Yeah. It, like I know he can get the bucket, but Come on, hit this. Wendell. Wendell! No, Wendell can't hit the three. Rebound down to Virginia Tech. Now going the other way is Radford and Radford with the left hand. Wow, and a, that is why you stop ball. Wow, what a what a reverse layup by Radford. Holy cow. Very poor transition defense by the Blue Devils right there. Mm. Still a 24-point game, though. What I don't want to see, like... I want to see Duke win by 30. Like, honestly, this like we have like five ACC wins by 30 or like or more points. Like, this needs to be number six. Like, Duke just needs to come out here and just stomp these guys. Like, it's plain and simple. Like, get we have to get that killer instinct and just go. Yeah. <laughs> Virginia Tech's not, not really not really coming back. Unless they have a time machine, they're not going back. They're not coming back anywhere. The first free throw is good. There you go. 
Uh, I watch Kentucky games from time to time, but uh, all the time. Oh, you're, sorry. Wow. He's asking somebody else in chat. Not everything's about us. Ah! Whoops. <laughs> Elaney hits only one of the two free throws, so make it 31 54 here in favor of the Blue Devils. Carry high post. Carry now driving in. Carry left hand, and that's going to be another foul yep. against OG, Ojiako. I feel like to check it's a lot of fouls throw throw far. It's been like four, fa three fouls this half. Yes, three Already? fouls this half for Virginia Tech. Uh, two for Duke. Yeah, and I, I'm seeing in chat right. There's a difference when you say top four, like the AP and the polls, and actually like a seed in the tournament. Because as you saw there, we're still technically like a a two seed. We're the second two seed. So like, if you want to logically make that connection, we're like the sixth team, best team in the country. But, like, the AP is never going to necessarily say that. My two cents. Both free throws are good there. As that was more, right? Yes, that was more. Yeah. Yeah, give him five points so far tonight. Radford. And more being guarded by Radford. Radford now in the paint. Oh, yo, he traveled. He absolutely yeah, he slid stepped. his feet when he jump stepped in there in the he paint. The possession 100%. arrow is going to give it back to the Blue Devils here. And that should be a hell ball. Should be. Trey Jones bringing the ball up the court to Carey. And Goldwire. Moore back to Carey. Oh. Carey basically traveled there too. That was close. Yeah. Moore. Moore finds his way in the paint there. It can't quite finish. But they see they didn't bring the double team because everybody's double teaming Vernon. So you basically have an open lane to the basket if you want to just drive. That's what a really good uh, offensive rebound there. Great extra effort for an extra possession. And Carey going to try. Carey gets fouled. Absolutely. Yeah, Carey is fouled foul. by, by Ojiako there. Second foul on him. And Carey's going to find himself a trip to the free throw line. 15.56 to go. We have hit the under 16 timeout. Yeah, this is going to take us to the break. It's been a good kind of start. Fortunately, we've only scored, I think, five points in the, in the first five minutes of this. But not too bad at all. Kind of keeping the lead, uh, keeping it strong, and racking up the fouls on uh, – Virginia Tech really, which will pay dividends if this ever does get close, close late. Yeah, except we've never really been able to like foul anybody out of a game. Like, oh my god. Yeah, we this, did. UNC. At, oh, at UNC, but the SF Austin game that was like one where you like we need to foul people out of this thing, and then the dude basically played the last like the over last ten minutes of the second half and the entire overtime with four fouls, and you're like, what? Like, what are we doing? Yeah, and you still end up like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like what are we doing here? And I think one of the – I just muted myself. Sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to update something. Updating the scores. It's okay. Um, as a reminder for everybody that is new and joined us in chat, we, we will be doing a March Madness Bracket Tournament. Um, it will be free to enter, and the prize pool is somewhere in the two to $300 range. Um, do you guys talk MLB in your Discord? I, I personally am not the biggest baseball fan fan or follow it um all that much but um you're more than welcome to pop in there and start a discussion about it yeah we don't have i know eric is a big mlb fan uh but it's mainly just uh mainly just on the basketball side <laughs> carrie has to carry every game <laughs> that actually not true tonight. Vernon Carey only with 11. Cassius Stanley, the high point scorer for the Blue Devils with 16. And Trey Jones with 10. But like, but yeah, like, obviously he has to carry like every game. Like Zion Williamson, like carried every game for us, basically. Yeah, that's true. I mean, at a certain point, all these players are going to have to carry. I mean, the best players are always going to have to carry something, right? Like, I mean, put it this way. If Vernon Carey doesn't show up, like we're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Like we're in big trouble. Tough. Yeah, 100%. Like, 
you, you can't you can't like Vernon Carey can't like really have like a bad game like a bad Vernon Carey game where he scores like six points and like maybe gets like six rebounds and like you know has like four fouls or something wow or like it's that would be like that would be bad San Diego State is still down eight points or seven points with how much with six minutes and 33 seconds there you go. go there you go yep yeah, and Trey Jones can also carry a game. He's shown himself capable of doing that. But that, but he is the. It's funny as a sophomore, he's the senior leader. Like the team and coaches talked about this. The team goes as Trey Jones goes. Yes. Basically. I I could I could get behind that 100. percent Yeah. I don't hate Duke fans, but sometimes. <laughs> Well, you're in this chat, so hopefully we don't annoy you too much, uh, Razor. <laughs> My def was blue. <laughs> There's Vernon Carey from the free throw line. We'll hit the first shot. Vernon Carey hitting from the free throw line. Uh, yeah, finally back to his winning ways here. <laughs> Your devil is blue. Nice, Jason. That's awesome. Oh, Vernon Carey misses the second of the two free throws. But give him 12 points here tonight. Or actually, he's got 14 and 9 rebounds. We'll have to check that here in a second. And the nice ro roll in there by Virginia Tech. Yeah, we welcome all the fans. What everybody be able to Oh, do there it is. Area. There was Carey finding yep. the open shooter in Wendell, but Wendell oh, can't quite just... get it down. Cash is Stanley with the rebound. Yes, that ball is absolutely out of Virginia Tech, and Duke will get another crack at it. That was a great play. That was the right play to make there. That was a good decision. Good basketball IQ. Yeah. So that that is exactly the play you want to see uh, Carey make. Especially coming out of passing out of the double teams. It's something that Okafor used to do really well. Yeah. And here's Trey Jones, nice little rainbow floater, but that can't go too high off the backboard. Down to Beatty, and now Beatty going the other way here is Kat, uh, Kator. And that's a foul against Cassius Stanley. That was going to be his third there on the reach in. Yeah, that was a foul. Yeah, that was, that was a foul. And wow, that resume is actually kind of nuts. BPI number one, net six, strength of schedule is eight. Wow. It's actually pretty good. And yeah, and so there you go. This is what you guys were saying about the the back and forth a little bit. I mean, Duke's still very much in play for that number one seed. What worries me is that we've never been able to win the damn thing without a one seed, right? So like, mm. Uh, Cross-court pass from Trey Jones to Stanley, and Stanley's going to put this one up, and Stanley gets fouled going up with it, and Stanley will find himself on the free throw line shooting two. Yeah, Mike, I, I mean, this is another foul again. It's been a really choppy start to this half. Well, it's been uh, a choppy right start for, I mean, for Virginia Tech, basically. They can't yeah, guard anyone. For us. Still, oh, like yeah, I mean, the game has yeah. sort of lacked a little bit of rhythm from both sides. Yeah, I agree. And San Diego State is now down nine with five minutes and 17 seconds left to go. Yeah, that Duke team last year, Razor, was just unbelievable to watch. It was literally every single time I turned the TV on, I was pumped. Not saying that I'm not now, but I am pumped. Well, that's what we got Cassius Stanley for, that. right? As Cassius Stanley makes both of them. Eric! All the VT fans became Florida State fans. That's <laughs> what Black Share left. <laughs> Uh, I, this game would be looking very different if he was still playing. Oh, here. Okay, okay. Wade Blackshear, I'm so glad he's gone for Virginia. I'm so that happy was he's literally a thorn in our side. Like, he's a great player. It's a great college player, but like, damn. Like, damn. It, something's weird at Florida. It hasn't flown as well. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. As well as I own Razor knows, he's a Kentucky fan. They just beat Florida today, and so Florida still can't quite can't quite win with them anyway so i'm just glad he didn't end up at the acc i think this whole transfer yeah, thing God. is like a, if you transfer within your own school o'connell with the steal and the slam 
Yeah, he's got two slaves today. He's flying high. I love it. He is. O'Connell playing. Like, he's only has four points, but they've been emphatic. Emphatic four points. Oh, that was blocked. That was blocked by Delorier there. Oof, three. Oh, that was a nice shot. That was a good shot. Couture for three from the outside as Virginia Tech manages to convert. They still find themselves down 25, however, so really the, not really managing to cut into the Duke lead at all. Is Stanley going to try for three? He's going to go four! Oh! Yes! Bang, baby! Five for six from the outside. Stanley's got 21. We're hitting. He is putting on a clinic We're hitting. tonight. Uh, yeah, Trey Jones did play last year. Cassius Stanley has had – this is his best game in a long time. So, so much for the freshman the freshman wall. He has busted right through that. Luckily for us, because it's great to have his points back, and that's Beatty from the outside yeah, managing shot. to hit for three, going bow for bow there. And Beatty finally gets on the board with three points there. Yeah, Trey Joe's kind of came back another year to work on his uh, just shooting, to be completely honest Stanley with you. Stanley thought about the three again. Gets this inside to Hurt. Hurt's going to put up oh, a tough two foul. and gets fouled. I think he sold that one. <laughs> I uh, think he sold it. He, like, got hit and then, like, didn't know what to do, but, like, shot it. Yeah, yeah. To get the foul. <laughs> like, had a very weird hesitation. Well, whether whether Trey Jones is Duke's best player, he's certainly Duke's most important. And that was actually the same. It was probably true yes, last year as well. Uh, because the point... So, what wins in March... Two things win games in March. One is excellent coaching. Which we have. Two is excellent point guard play. Which we have not always had. And so that's kind of been the missing piece as Matthew Hurt makes the second one. The missing so piece has been the superb I, point guard play. So you pointed out a few things, right? One, two. I think it's one A and then one B. One A is good coaching. The one B is players that listen to the coach. So as far as like, oh, because well, are, you, are you trying to say because last year they were saying all oh, this, yes. the players didn't listen. So go, go yes. for it. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I'm just saying that you need a great coach in tournament time, but you also need a great team that is listening to the coach in tournament time. If mm -hmm. you have a great coach and the team's not listening, then nothing's going to happen here. Great Matthew Hurt rolled straight to the basket. It's going to be a foul there as well. We are racking up the fouls from Virginia Tech. We are, are going to be on, into the bonus right now, too, with 12 minutes and 25 seconds left in the game, which is insane, to be completely honest with you. Yeah, a bit of foul trouble here for Virginia Tech. Isaiah Wilkins with three and Eleni with three as well. And yeah, we lost to Michigan State in the Sweet 16. A I was at Elite Eight. Elite Eight. I was at the game in the Capital One Arena here in Washington, D.C. Oh, wait, you did get to go to that one? Oh, you were yeah, off I in did. the uh, in Paid the like beach, 250 the bucks right? to see R.J. Barrett <laughs> just be a ball hog and lose the game. Oh, it's Lord. It's really depressing. I've never left that fast from an arena. Uh, Matthew Hurt does hit the two free throws. Give him 11. So he is now the fourth Blue Devil scorer to put themselves into double figures, joining Trey Jones with 10, Cassius Stanley with 21, and Vernon Carey with 12. And the uh, missed shot there by Virginia Tech up ahead to O'Connell. And Duke just willing to, at this point, burn the air out of the ball here for a little bit as Trey Jones is actually getting some rest, not on the floor. It is Javin Hurt, and Javin's... Actually, that's going to be a foul. Wow, they pushed him to the back. It's going to go to the free throw line, too. If that is Wilkins. Go that is Wilkins' 12. fourth foul. They're about to go for the under 12 timeout here, too. Yep, and that is good. We have hit the under 12 timeout. So just wanted to welcome in all the viewers who have been with us here, uh, who are new to the chat or have been with us here throughout the afternoon. It's been an active Kentucky Duke, true blue blood back and forth. You would have felt like. May as well be, uh, we may as well be hitting the hardwood here in chat. Um, hi, Elena. Hey, what's up, Elena? How you doing? Um, yeah, so, so far, so good here for Duke. Just out and controlling this game really from start to finish. And 
you just sort of, yeah. What else? What else can we say about our Blue Devils? They, yeah, they've I been mean, good they've tonight. Been they've been good tonight. It. Yeah, it's been fantastic. They've been absolutely crushing it today. Kind of what we started off with the show, too, saying how they were going to come out with effort, speed, and playing defense. They've done that, and it set up the game really well for them uh, from the start. I mean, they've really set this game up in the first 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. So Duke positioned to take back the second place in the ACC with the win here today. We're just going to go ahead and say, you know, they're going to win this one, which basically – uh, puts them tied with Florida State, but of course we own the tiebreaker as we did beat Florida State at home. So that will make sure Duke gets the double bye come t- ACC tournament time in about two or three weeks' time. Um, yes, friendly battle of the Blues. <laughs> yeah, the game last year was crazy against Kentucky, though. That was the that was the coming out party yeah. for Zion, Ooh. RJ, and uh, Reddish. I mean, we Ooh. peaked. At the beginning of the season. <laughs> That's the unfortunate part. Yeah. Where you're like, wow. We peaked so we peaked hard. at the start of the season. Yeah, we peaked so hard at the start oh, of the season. Mm. That was tough. That was brutal. Yeah, for some reason, we, we always seem to like be able to get up and, and play that, that first game uh, really well. It's always a downer if you lose the first game. But it's always a tough one because either Kentucky, Kansas, or Michigan State. Right, so yeah, it's out of like the four, right, that we always get to play yeah, against. It's, it's the same same four that open up the season, and I guess next year our rotation will have us do Michigan State again, which is I guess we can't play them in the ACC Big Ten Challenge again because basically we ended up playing oh, Kansas and then going to Michigan State for the ACC yeah. Big Ten Challenge, and we just blew them out of that one. So we looked really good in that game. I mean, yeah. we've had some pretty good games against a very good opponents this year and have won them. Yeah, that's why. Well, that's why the strength of schedule is number six. And of course, we played a tough game against Louisville. Unfortunately, that one didn't go our way, which, well, we should have won it. But, you know, yeah, we probably like, should have won. But yeah, that's a, a bound. It happens. Yeah, it right? happens. And yeah, so it's basically saying like this is here's a couple highlights here from Cassius Stanley today. So far, he's been playing extremely well. Stanley has been just unconscious here from the floor. Yeah, I mean, he's just been knocking down threes like absolutely nothing. Seven of ten, five of six from the outside. Stanley's been doing it all here. He has been having a 21-point performance here. No high-flying dunks, however. Or we haven't seen them yet. Yeah, but because uh, O'Connell's been taking them from O'Connell has been taking over the role. Yeah. Uh, Do you guys live in North Carolina? No, I live in the nation's capital, actually. And yeah, I'm over in Seattle. So actually, we are broadcasting this from like two sides of the country. <laughs> yeah. And somehow it meets in the middle, right? And somehow it meets in the middle. And Matthew Hurt gets both free throws yet again. So a Hurt, man, this kid actually Hurt can shoot free throws. We saw him come up with clutch free throws again in the Florida State game. Yeah. And reminder here, San Diego State is down to Louis, uh, UNLV with three minutes and 46 seconds. They are down by 10. So that would basically knock San Diego State off the one line. Still plenty of basketball to be played, however. My guess is they will probably win out in the West Coast Conference Tournament as that shot by Virginia Tech rims out and the rebound down to the Blue Devils. Uh, and then Razor asked how we became Duke fans. Oh, so I went to Duke twice actually so yeah. that's uh that 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 basically <laughs> there's no other i didn't have a choice uh, great move matthew by matthew hurt. hurt down low there yeah matthew it's hurt the, can't quite finish now question for chad and also you as well if, if san diego state loses what they drop to like a three seed no they'll just like they'll just drop like a, a line or something Virginia Tech still cold for the outside as Duke has opened up a 30-point lead here. And there are still 10 minutes and 45 seconds of basketball left to go. It's like a, one of my AAU games here. Yeah, Jesus. at this point, just start playing pickup. I'm hoping to see the uh, back. And here's Alex O'Connell from three. No, Ooh. can't get it to go. The rebound down to Virginia Tech. Duke. <laughs> yeah, nice, Eric. Thanks, Eric. So much for <laughs> And, and we're just like we're just gonna stop at that score right there. Uh, I wonder if we two. stop scoring if 
If we stopped scoring right now, they would still not win. I don't think they'd still win, right? Yeah. No, they would I'm still not win. Just by like numbers of possessions, you don't have enough. No, because you could probably burn off 30 seconds and that's well, that's a bad turnover by Wendell. That's what you don't want to see actually yeah, this at this is... point. Three point from the outside for Virginia Tech nice. is nice. no good. So he dodged the flying turkey shot there. And I, I really just expect to see Duke co go into game management now. This is where defense really you should step up. You don't really need to score that Talk much. about game management. You're just giving and, the ball away. Uh, that is not how you manage the game. O'Connell, back-to-back -back turnovers here for the Blue Devils. Virginia Tech's going to try to shoot the three again, and that one's not uh, going to go. Rebound down to O'Connell. All right, put Trey Jones first. back in the game because this is getting sloppy. Mm-hmm. Timeout. Timeout, yep. A whole line change here. As Jack uh, Jack White, Joey Baker, Kerry Stanley, and Trey Jones are going to enter the game. And it is a timeout for Duke. At the 922 mark, Duke ahead by 28. <laughs> That's a huge drop off. I don't know. Oh, go out to seven as in like seven in the AP or seven seed in the tournament. So no way. I think they'll still Eight be like second a, seed. Oh, I, okay. I, I still think they'll be like a second or third seed, even if they lose this game. You know, you know what does make it really interesting though? Finally, for the first time, there is another team out west that can compete for the West's number one seed with Gonzaga. Oh, uh, with Gonzaga, yeah, yes, exactly. Actually, I think that is like so interesting because, like we've like I've had rants about the Gonzaga conspiracy. And the NCAA and how they just give them the number one seed because they need like a big name sort of marquee team to fill that number one seed out in the West. But now they could actually there's actually like a little bit of back and forth there. Yeah, completely for the first time. I, I think it's great. <laughs> Although saying saying they just can't beat Gonzaga here. I don't know if they could beat them. And as we. Let me look. Let me look up that game. What is it? Uh, it's on ESPN, I think. Is it the main game? No, it's not. I hear Bill Walden on the other television. I oh, have outside, Lord. so it's so it's definitely something else. Unfortunately, I don't have the Wilder fight up yet. It's got Bill Walden on that stream. Yeah, it's just uh, awful. Because if it does get close, we'll just uh, we'll just put that game on and show kind of show it as it plays out. It's on CBS. Oh, never mind. I can't do. I can't in that case. And they're now down by six with two minutes and thirty-seven sec seconds left. I'll keep a game cast up to keep y'all updated. So. Yeah. Also, a quick question, just for Chad. I know we're watching basketball, but does anybody have money on the uh, on the fight tonight, or any opinions on the Fury Wilder? I'm a uh, I'm Team Fury, so. You're Team Fury. I yeah, the Gypsy not. King, baby. Woo! Coming from the streets in England. That's what I love. He always talks about Liverpool, so you got to support the Liverpool guys, you know, the hometown team. No, so Camden, I think we're 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 tracking San Diego State at the moment. <laughs> oh, you were saying earlier it was like lost in the shuffle of all the fans going. Oh, oh, yeah, I see yeah, that. probably. Sometimes it's hard to like almost like follow down the conversation <laughs> as it goes. Oh, I'm so excited for boxing, man. You have no idea. Oh, Jack White now so in nice the game as we have come out of this under 12 timeout. I think that is the under 12 timeout and Vernon Carey actually going to find himself getting fouled and he is going to go to the free throw line. It is going to be a one and one or actually no, this is a two point shooting foul. I couldn't tell if the ref called this one on the floor or not. It looked a little odd. Yeah, I'll be honest. I was not watching. I was looking at the game cast of this other game. Uh, actually yeah. it is just the one and one. I was right the first time as Jack White ends up fouling on Jack White. Yep. I'm a fan of the, some of the Duke players going with like the all black shoes today. Jack White, Alex O'Connell, and there was somebody else that had like the black footwear. shoes on. Yeah, I thought it was really neat. I think it's always cool. 
Virginia Tech trying to at least salvage a bit of dignity here towards the end of this game. Oh, Stanley there sells out for the steal and can't get it to go. And it's a nice uh, free throw line jumper there. From Virginia Tech. And San Diego State has now cut it down to four with a minute and 18 seconds left in the game. Radford there connecting for Virginia Tech. Actually, I think he is. It's a three. It's a three second call down low. Wow. I haven't that's, seen one of those called. In, like, that's a weird call. Uh, yeah, that's a weird call. Radford driving again, tries to put that one up, can't get it to go. Stanley down with a rebound. Trey Jones now with the ball up ahead. So we finally got our point guard back out there. Joey Baker going to try from three. That shot is short. White tries to the rebound. Radford now goes ahead. Here's Cador, and Cador slams it home. Wow, he got that one past Carey, actually. Woo! We we're now not at 69 points. <sighs> We have been sit stuck there for a while as Joey Baker. Hey, Camden, if Bill Walton ever does Duke game, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Yes, exactly. Oh, my goodness. But he usually does them in Maui. Although yeah, he only does like West Coast games for the specific reason of why he's not a good commentator. If anybody as, ooh, That's another together. three there by Couture. Ooh, or, I think or, it's a good game. Arizona. Yeah, it's a good game. I, I, I don't know enough about both teams to say who's going to win, but I've, it should be a good game. Trey Jones from the free throw line. Can't get that one to connect. Rebound down to Stanley. However, Stanley uh, going to try the three again. Can't finish that one. So that's his only his second missed three-pointer. He's made more than he's missed, which is pretty good. And there's Cador again. Oh, uh, Coach Case going to be Couture not happy about for that. two more. Yeah, the transition defense really not yeah, good there. Yeah, it was there. really poor. Really poor transition defense. Duke had basically extended this thing out to almost a 30-point lead. Virginia Tech now back down to 21 as Carey gets triple teamed down in the paint, and it's going to be a foul. And that's going to be a foul, third foul on Ojiaco for Virginia Tech. <laughs> Camden. No, so the crazy one, remember when they did the one in Maui and the poor uh, Yeah, and the guy commentator? like actually like oh. had to tell him to stop talking. It was really awkward. It was really awkward. It was really awkward. He was yeah. like, you can't be saying this on like national television. Yeah. Like that's the that's the that is Bill Walton for you. It was very awkward. I've never felt more uncomfortable watching a basketball game in my entire life. Yikes. I didn't know it was possible to feel uncomfortable watching it. I hope we never make you guys feel like that and gals. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to say some pretty extreme stuff. Yeah, <laughs> some wild stuff. Or just be in a very bizarre state of mind. Which Put is it that way. Happen. Yeah. Not going to happen live on air. Yep. Goldwire O'Connell. We, we don't mix pleasure and uh, work. All right, so... I'm trying to make figure out why my score is off here. I thought our Blue Devils have been. I guess that wasn't Baker that hit the three. Uh, I don't think Baker scored anything. No, he didn't. All right. <laughs> oh, wow. there's a, there's the oh, NC State there's fan. The NC State oh my god, fan. that's hilarious. Oh, the trolls are here. That is really funny, actually. The troll. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, we have an NC State fan. Oh, man. Everybody say hello to the NC State fan. Everybody wave. See you in two weeks. I hope you're in chat in two weeks. When we play you again, I hope you're here. Oh, that is so funny. How was, uh, how was Florida State? How was Florida State? <laughs> yeah, I was Florida State. I was Florida was State today. Game. Couldn't really follow. You couldn't really follow up your performance. <laughs> Bad loss today. Yeah. <laughs> what happened, man? We like 
you go out, you beat Duke. They're number six. Florida State comes to town. They're number eight. You would think they should. <laughs> they should. They should win. No, can't. Can't quite follow up. Oh, that is really funny. That is so funny. Well, welcome, 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 NC State fan. I think it was 22. Let's not like, let's not re like, this is not revisionist history. I thought it was 20. The margin was 22. Not 26. I actually thought here, I texted somebody earlier today and I was like, watch NC state's going to lose by 22 to Florida state. <laughs> Cause that's just how this thing happens. <laughs> would have would have been on the on the NC State bandwagon, the miracle bandwagon. Oh, Vernon Carey at the oh, line. This is great. Shooting, yeah, Vernon Carey gets that one to go. Ah, NC State choked today. This is incredible. our friends from 25 minutes down the road in Raleigh and PNC Arena. I saw a crazy stat. I saw a crazy stat today that Duke. Oh, crap. I wonder if I saved this tweet. And Some... It is 20 seconds left, and San Diego State is down by four. It looks like they are not going to pull this one out. Uh, I did not save it. It's something like Duke has... Something like Duke has eight losses in Cameron. Duke has, like, eight losses in Cameron uh, in the last, button. like, X number of years. And and then it has six losses at PNC Arena in the same amount of time. Oh my god! Yeah, so like it's just something about like it's just something about going and playing at PNC Arena, like and actually one of the losses at in in Cameron is attributed to NC State. It's just like a thing. I don't. It's just a thing. Whatever. NC State, yeah, NC State will not win in Cameron. It's not going to happen. Sorry, guys, it's not going to happen. And it's going to be like, like Duke is out for blood in a big way in that in that rivalry. Yeah, that's going to be a huge one, right? No, like, we're not. We're not acting like FSU is bad. FSU is a really good team. I mean, they played. Uh, they came into Cameron and played us incredibly hard. That was an incredibly physical, incredibly tough game. Like, they deserve to be ranked where they are, and they deserve to have all the success. Like, they're a great team. It just, it's just sort of funny that, uh, that like, you, you think we could have, like, you could have the back-to-back. The, what happens is that teams beat, like, they get all hyped up about Duke coming into their home gym, and they beat, they pull off this massive upset, and then the next game, they just, like, go out and lay an egg. Like, Wake Forest is notorious for doing this. And there's it's the so nice block. true, though. Wake it's Forest so... is notorious for doing this. Where they, like, we go into Winston-Salem and somehow lose, and by the way, we have to go there on Tuesday, which is, like, sort of precarious any, in, like, to just to start with. And then, like, the next, the next game, they'll just get, like, blown out of the gym. Wow, I cannot believe they just missed that tip in. Well, I mean, it's just not going for him for any. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, same. Screen there at the top by Hurt, and Trey Jones backed out to Hurt, and Matthew Hurt's going to try his own hand from three and can't get that to go. Rebound down to Wilkins. Call it. I don't have the San Diego State game. That's the problem. Yeah, we don't have them. Actually, personally. hold on. The man's most interesting man. Actually, you should him. be able to because you should be able to go on CBS and CBS. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hold on. And pull it up. I'm watching it right now. CBS Sports, right? Yeah, you should be able to pull it up and be able to watch it. Oh, what the heck? Why can't I watch it? Yeah, I got it. You do? Okay, I sweet. Think. We'll. If it comes off, if, if he's if he's able to get it, we'll call the last like ten seconds of it. Wait a sec. Where's the watch now? Hold on. Yep. 
It's coming up. It's coming up. Hold on. I have like five different things. Yeah, he's got like moment. three screens going. He's got like a whole like command center over there. So just give him a sec. We're going to see if we can call the last portion of this game for y'all. It is a one point game with 12 seconds left. The possession arrow is with UNLV. It's not working. My video player is not allow. I uh, I just heard Bill Walton go quack quack. Oh my god, man, this guy hurts my brain. <sighs> God, do this. I think we're missing it anyways. Hold on. I well, I will continue calling the uh, the Duke game for right now. It is currently we are up by twenty three points, three minutes and fifteen seconds left. And Virginia Tech has the it's ball here. It's going to shoot a three pointer, and uh, they're going to get the rebound. It's going to go back off of uh, the Virginia Tech player, and we will go to the under four timeout. I gave you the code and password in group or in Zoom chat. Which chat? Zoom. There's like five bajillion things going on, dude. I... I can't ac I can't access it. Text, you gotta text it. This is too. No. Sorry, I can't. I don't. I don't have the. Okay, hold on. Is it over? All right, well, I got it up. So I will call the rest of the game here for the UNLV and San Diego State. We have three minutes and three, uh, three seconds left. UNLV has the ball here. It looks like San Diego State will not be able to win this, but they were actually looking at the monitor for an out-of-bounds call, which could totally swing the uh, the rest of this um, right here. So the ball seems to actually go... They UNLV is... Oh, I can't tell if he... He does throw it off of the San Diego State player, so it looks like UNLV will have the ball under the basket um, right now, if that's what the refs end up deciding. I do not know what the call on the floor is, so I don't know what is necessarily indisputable or not, but that is currently, uh, where we stand. We're waiting to, it is officially confirmed that it is UNLV basketball here. So it is going to be, you know, to be inbounding the ball with four seconds left. San Diego state needs a steal and a three, or they will have to foul. And most likely the game will be over. And here we go. I, I, you know, I can't, I can't get ball. it. He throws it all the way down the court. He's actually going to throw it to a San Diego State player. The San Diego State player gets it at half court. He's going to run. He's going to shoot it for three. Oh, he misses it. Oh, wow. And I, okay. That's anticlimactic because I just got it. <laughs> San Diego State's undefeated season has come to an end. That was actually pretty close. I do think he had more time and could have taken a few more steps, but he did walk when he shot the three.
I don't I assume they're gonna give us a replay here. Oh yeah, here is the replay. That's what wow, that is way I yeah, actually no, he sure. didn't have any more time. He had to put that up. Wow, that was close. Oh no, that was close. Yeah, he just he was off on the right. That was crazy. Wow. Look at that. That is that's nuts. There goes the undefeated team. I think they're actually going to drop down as we talked before, maybe to the last two seed or maybe even the uh, last uh last uh three seed. All right, back to our game here. As NC State has made an exit, uh, and just a nice play there by Jordan Go. I only got two minutes and thirty seconds left here. And did Jordan you say bye bye to the NC State fam? Yeah, everybody, everybody, wave goodbye to NC State. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> unfortunately what happens when you're rude and not nice in chat. You go bye bye. I think we should unban him when we play him again and beat him. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, there are no there are no second chances. <laughs> hey, hypnosis with the wave. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I oh, it's it. actually what we do in Cameron where we go. See ya. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> yeah, when you get five fouls, that's the uh, that's the see ya there. Oh, that was a that was a ferocious dunk, by the way. That was that was beast mode. I'm telling you, they changed the Coach K symbol. That Coach K court, you. buddy, has not changed. No, I'm telling you, like the lettering or the color is something you, is different. Boy, you crazy. No, the K looks way different. Uh, it has more wins next to it. No, nah, there's there's something there's something different. They changed it. There, see, Eric got it right. Oh, see ya. Yeah. And then, of course, like people try to troll us by not actually sitting down on the bench. That's always a good one. Like they try to like resist actually like fouling out of the game. It never really ends well for them because the Cameron crazies don't actually stop chanting until they actually uh, sit down, right? Until they actually sit down. So <laughs> I love it. Outside three point shot by Goldwire. Not good there. Matthew hurt with the rebound. Duke just in cruise control mode. Oh man, Matthew got blocked. He got he absolutely got wrecked. Destroyed. Oh, I am right. It is different. In this photo, I'm looking at it, and it has white outlining over the K. All right, so maybe I'm crazy. It happens. Whatever. It's fine. It's small. It's not a big deal. Huh. I just thought the court looked a little different. That's just. Also, so for three point shooting has been a problem for us, right? Uh, but have we also considered? No, no, not not yeah, not as much as last year. But we have we also considered the fact they moved the line back. I mean, maybe, maybe, but like you'd have to say, is three point shooting down across the board? Is the fair. is the right question to ask in that case? Fair, very fair, right? Very fair. And we are adding Justin Robinson to our scoreboard since he has picked up a foul. That's sort of an inglorious <laughs> way to be added to the scoreboard. Hey, it's good enough, right? But Uh, free throws has been a bigger problem than three point Andrews. shooting. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, if, I actually so think it's more important. It is more important. I mean, we we knew that the free, the free throw situation was going to cost us a game at some point. Um, and it obviously it cost us like the Louisville game. It cost us the SF Austin game, too. Interestingly enough, the NC State game was the first game that we've really lost out of the four losses that we've lost. But uh, actually, uh, there's two losses where we've had the entire squad, SF Austin and NC State. The other two losses were uh, with injuries. Wendell was out for both of them, and then Joey Baker was actually out for one of those two losses. So we had sort of a depleted squad there. 
But yeah, the free throw shooting needs to improve. Well, needs to at least. Oh my goodness, what a block by Robinson! That was great. Pass back. Go to over the the yes! Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, let's go! Let's go! Robinson, the walk on getting in on the action, on the assist by Matthew Hurt. Heck yeah! Yeah, it was an alley oop too. That was really awesome to watch. He got his, he got that his is block. a replay worthy one. We will got absolutely his bring that block one. and got his alley oop with a two hit finish. I love it. I think someone was saying that Robinson, they know him in chat, or somebody was saying that earlier. That is so cool. As That's dude, really cool, man. Burn the air out of this one here, and we're probably just going to take the shot clock violation. Last year, Cam Reddish was so disappointed with his shooting. Yeah, I mean, it was it was inconsistent. It was inconsistent. It was what it was Robinson oh! for three. He hit the three. <laughs> no way, man. Oh, that's so awesome for him. Yo, somebody in chat earlier did say they wanted to see points for yeah, Robinson. Well, exactly. you got him. He's got five. Somebody from the beginning said it. Somebody in the very beginning. That was awesome, and that is the game, ladies and gentlemen. Duke is going to go ahead and win it in bounce-back fashion by 24 points, not the 30. Um, not the 30-point margin we were hoping for, but in any case, the uh, the commander. I, I said it was the lieutenant, but, like, it could be either one. Robinson there from the outside. That Beautiful awesome. swatch. That was cool. So, a wire-to-wire -wire win here. Wire-to-wire -wire victory for our Blue Devils. They look good from the onset. Virginia Tech got behind early. Nothing they could really do to catch up. Oh, yeah. Adams called it out. That's what it was. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. a great game completely by Duke. Came out, like we said, and then uh, had a really good reaction from NC State. We'll see a big challenge then uh, on, uh, on Tuesday. Well, really there great. you go. Chat was right. They called for Robinson. They wanted Robinson. They got him. Great call nice. by our chat there earlier in the day. And that was, boy, we went back and forth on this one a, uh, a couple of times. Oh, this is the end of the Baylor game. This is the end of the Baylor That's game. They're basically the saying shot. that Gonzaga will probably rise to number one, which to me doesn't really make any sense because I would just throw Kansas in there. Yeah, I would put Kansas in over it. I would just put Kansas in there. How do you guys think we'll play against Virginia? I hate playing against Virginia. It, you know, it's a boring game. First it's things first, terrible. however, we have to go to uh, Wake Forest on Tuesday. That's the first thing that needs to happen. So we can't look past a game in Winston-Salem. That game's on Tuesday. It's a 7 o'clock game on the East Coast. I think we'll bring that one to you live here again as well. So we'll be here doing the, the Tuesday game. And then next Saturday will be Virginia, followed by Monday's game, which is then NC State. And then capping it all off, it is going to be UNC next uh, in two Saturdays from now, two weeks from now, to finish off the regular season. Elena there saying, as long as we get over 70, we will win. Yep. Yes. Virginia works on the rule. Virginia works on the rule of 70. Basically, if you can put 70 on Virginia, that's how you beat them. And that coined by our uh, co-caster, Eric, there. So he's got the, the law of 70. Although, yeah, Virginia having a bit of a down year. I believe that game is in Charlottesville, though. I think it is. Yeah. But uh, we beat them twice last year anyway. Vir I mean, we see no matter how good Virginia seems to be, they just can't beat us. Sorry. Wow. Just no can't shot. beat us. Just, like, not happening. So. All right. Any final thoughts? I got – I mean, I, I'm going to be really excited to kind of see the how we react and kind of continue the rest of the season with San Diego State losing some of these other teams going down. I mean, it's all up for grabs. Uh, it's completely, completely uh, honest here, and I hope it really works out for us kind of just with the effort. I think it's the effort level, starting these games out strong. That's key. Yep, and we absolutely did that here tonight in Cameron. All right, a great win for our Blue Devils. We're going to go cut some highlights and bring you a nice fun story about Duke cooking some turkeys. And then I don't know. We'll have to ask uh, the, our fellow co-casters if we'll be doing a show tomorrow morning. We'll see. Maybe. But in any case, we'll be back on Tuesday. Uh, let's see. Oh, just uh, proven there. Final things in chat. We'll be back on Tuesday for Wake Forest. Make sure to drop a like and a subscribe so you can come back and get notified of when we go live. For all of us here at Relive Sports, I'm Ritz. That's Fran. We thank everybody for hanging out with us tonight and cheering on our Blue Devils. Much appreciated.
Uh, we are going to sign off for the rest of the evening. Y'all can keep the conversation going. And that is going to be it for us. Go Duke. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.